across the country, people realized that a section of their society, the services, were embarked on a venture to protect at all cost the territorial integrity of their land. This was a happening created by the media who permitted the multitude to comprehend as it ought to be. Very little published literature was available of battles past for a host of reasons which required to be corrected. The publication of the book Zojila attempts to do just that. This is not a definitive work of military history in purest terms. It is a compendium of rare paintings, sketches, maps and photographs, most of which have never been published before. Let's take a look at the pictorial material of this book to be discussed later. Mr. Praveen Kumar is the visual designer, while paintings, maps and sketches and photographs are provided by Sarbjeet Singh. we are all aware that Sarbjeet Singh's early years were spent in trekking and climbing across the length and breadth of the Himalayas. Maker of over 400 films and winner of many national and international awards, he is a two-time winner of the national award, the first time in 1964 for his feature The Avalanche and the second time in 1987 for Story of Delhi. invited Praveen Kumar, the visual designer of the book titled Zojila, 1st November 1948, and writer, journalist and broadcaster Baldev Sharma to discuss the book. It's a nice pictorial book and uh, having lot of pictures, lot of maps, lot of photographs. And uh, is it your last publication? First, let me thank you for calling me here. Secondly, again, and for the appreciation that you have done for my book. This is uh, one of our last publications. And uh, we thought that since the country had gone through the turmoil of Cargill, so we should bring out a book, particularly a coffee table book, with a lot of pictures on an, an operation that took part in 1948 and whose importance was that had not that op operation been there, the geography of the country and the history of the country would have been totally different. That means, uh, do you think that uh, this particular operation uh, is still relevant to the readers who are the readers of history, those who really want to know what exactly was done before they were even born, because uh, lately what has happened, you know, at the borders uh, uh, in Kargil. So the thought came to you after the Kargil event uh, came, you wanted to display this uh, particular event which took place uh, 52 years back. You see, when I noticed the media projection of Cargill episode and noticed about the historical aspects of our operational details of the wars fought by Indian Army. Maximum of the books that have been produced or published or written are more of textual. While the readership today wants more of a pictorial material, visual material, so that they don't have to read much but certainly get the grasp of the total operation with the help of pictures. So that was the basic reason we thought that we should come out with a book based on that operation with the help of pictures plus reading material. Even uh, would you like to elaborate a little more on the event that occurred in the year 1948 in relation to Indo-Pak um, war? You see, we got, uh, we got 
freedom in 1947 and the country was divided into two portions, the so-called Pakistan and India, Hindustan. Mm -hmm. And from July 47 onwards, it had been the motivation and it had been the motive of the Pakistan, the Pak government there that we should have uh, Kashmir mm -hmm. with, uh, with them. Even today the thing yes. on the same lines. They are still on the same lines. So what they thought they started uh, sending invaders in a three-pronged attack. One through Aknur area, the second was Baramula and the third was this Zojila Pass. Baramula was being controlled by Jack Militia, again the forces of Jack, Jammu and Kashmir right? state forces, while uh, this pass being at a very high, very lot of height, I think it's around 11,575 feet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, the enemy post was on a elevation. Mm -hmm. So they were controlling the movement of Indian Army. And this is the only road that has the logistic supply route for Leh Ladakh. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to barricade our supplies for the army, for the population there. That was part one. Part two was the invaders were moving from Baramula. Enemy troops were moving from uh, this axis also. And they all, their, their mission was that we should all together in Srinagar, get together in Srinagar. I suppose uh, at a certain time this pass gets closed, isn't it? Yes. The Which pass uh, that is? The pass closes in October, 30th October. It's closed and uh, opens in May. It's closed because for around. Snow. Yes, snow is around 50 feet, 60 feet. Mm -hmm. Even um, uh, in May, after the snow is cleared, you can still find the hillocks of around 30 feet and 40 feet up, mm -hmm. out of the which, uh, in between the two hillocks, there is a road passing and you can find the snow there. Mm -hmm. So the basic, in fact, thing that we wanted to bring out in this book was that at a temperature of minus 20 or so mm -hmm. in September, when the operation started, and uh, the tanks were to reach the height of around 12,000 feet approximately, our troops were not having winter uniforms. Mm -hmm. We were just a new country. The army was uh, not exactly organized in such a way no. as they are organized these days. No, it, the organization could not have been there because we, were, we, we got independence very recent. Mm -hmm. And we were not prepared for that operation. But the motivation, but the, um, I must say, the morale was very high. Of the army time. people or the people no. who... Everybody, in, whosoever was involved in this operation, his morale was very high. I went to, we went to the, this area with our team, uh, categorically um, uh, to just see, to relive the moments. Here I would like to really ask you one thing, because you have just said that your team had gone. I have gone through the book and uh, find that you have been able to find those people who were uh, operational at that time even. That means uh, their age should be somewhere around 70, 75. Was it possible with you that uh, you had got addresses that you went there or it was a coincidence that people were meeting you and you went on uh, having their interviews and then you uh, made a list of them and then prepared the whole book? See, it was, uh, I must say, it was um, uh, coincidence mm -hmm. or you may say himmat e marda madad khuda because we were not expecting to get the interviews of the locales there categorically, but certainly of the army people that were involved because we knew the list, we mm -hmm. knew the people, mm -hmm. we knew their whereabouts, but uh, the locales there we were not expecting that we'd be meeting them. But your book really emphasized on this point that uh, locals uh, did maximum to their level extent that they and they they wanted to even supply the maximum what they could do at that time. You see, that's right. In fact, in 1947, there was a movement which was called Kashmiriyat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, by Sherwani, mm -hmm. and that Kashmiriyat is uh, a mixture of all the religions. Yes, 
there they don't differentiate between Hindus, Muslims, or other religions. They say we are Kashmiris, belonging to one part. Whether it was uh, Indian Army operation or the help of a locale, in fact, in this one of the local person was decorated by I think Veer Chakra. I see. Yes, he was given, a, he was uh, awarded Veer Chakra. Is um, uh, Nila Garar, Muhammad Ismail of Nila Garar, yes, yes. and he is very well known there. Mm -hmm. Then we met a person who joined Jammu Kashmir government at a very young age of 25. We were just having tea mm -hmm. at Gund Kangan. So um, uh, just um, inquisitive, being inquisitive about what is the people, what are the people doing here. Then uh, one of our people asked, "Well, are you aware of this fight?" And suddenly we heard a very, very meticulous English from a person who was wearing pajamas, mm -hmm. supporting a beard, not looking like a very well-read man. Mm -hmm. But he spoke very good English, I must say that. And he told, yes, I was there. I was 25. And um, At that time, yes, 48. Yes, he was 25. Now he's around 70. Mm -hmm. mm, I think Sheikh Haji, Sheikh something, Sheikh Muhammad. Yes, yes you mentioned it then. Yeah. So, um, uh, he retired as state labor officer and he said, we helped the army. We told them the routes, we told them whatever we could help them. If, if we, they wanted us to take their goods to the heights, we helped them. Again, we went to the next point, which is Baltal, which was the basic base for this operation, in fact. From Baltal, you start the movement for Zojela. It's around five kilometer track, five to seven kilometer track to the pass from Baltal. And uh, there, again, we incidentally, we met two porters. And they mm -hmm. told us mm, the way they carried the goods for the army. In At the that time? Yes, in the mid of night. Mm -hmm. So, I must say, it was a combined effort of the nationals, not only the army. Mm -hmm. It was the combined effort of the people there to fight against the invaders, to take care of their independence. They wanted independent independence and they helped the Indian army very much. Even now when you had gone there, you must have faced certain hazards even now. Uh, would you like to explain a few because uh, as far as I understand there is only one way you can go and then uh, while returning it becomes another way around the other persons, uh, other people, other party can come. Must be facing certain hazards yes. uh, your team as a whole? Yes. You see, this track is a uh, supply route for uh, Indian Army. <coughs> this track is supply route for Indian Army and is maintained by Indian Army people. So they have a very fixed timings of leaving the traffic for one way. They I clear see. the traffic from one side and when the total traffic has passed from that side, then they allow the traffic from the other side. But the road is still, I must say, oh God. You have to have there, you have to be there to experience the road. And uh, how do they pass the signals that certain third certain part is coming and certain third certain part is going? How do they do it normally? Uh, you see, in uh, nowadays, the communication is very easy. Yeah. But the army people must have put some sort of their signal unit there. Is it under army control? That's under army control. Certainly under okay. army control. You have to have uh, clearance first to um, uh, from the TCP point at the Baltal mm -hmm. to go beyond you have to tell them how many people are going what are their names mm -hmm. they note down everything the number of the car or mm -hmm. the number of the vehicle you are traveling in mm -hmm. and then they let you so now coming back to the uh, book as far as the audience or the readership is concerned you see such books which are uh, heavily costed, I understand, because the paper you have used, the press you have used, it's the beautiful offset press. Uh, do you first of all uh, have your target uh, readership and then print the book or uh, it is that you print the book and target it uh, to the market and it is uh, purchased there? You see, uh, when we think of producing and publishing a book, we always first think of our marketing strategy. Mm -hmm what is the readership going to be? Now, the coffee table concept is a concept for the side tables that are being kept. A person who has not much time to read the text, 
that certainly would like to read something or browse through something. A good pictorial book is there. He picks up the book, mm -hmm. starts turning the pages and find mm -hmm. it interesting. Mm -hmm. If there is interesting material in visual as well as textual, he goes out to the market and buys it. Mm -hmm. And certainly we took care that we are going to bring out a book which has the meaning for every level, whether it is youngster. Mm -hmm. So he gets some sort of motivation from after seeing what were the difficulties that our soldiers are had suffered at that particular at point, that point of time. And um, uh, again, for the collectors, because we had uh, beautiful paintings in it by a very yeah, well yeah. well known painter, yeah. he gave us paintings colored paintings in then he gave us his sketches which are again very good depicting that point that uh, scene mm -hmm. in fact he catched that scene at that time and it is still there uh, Praveen here I would like to ask you one question more as far as I understand uh, I have seen other books also which have been published by uh, your uh, organization you normally print the books related to army people or army operations or army activity. Uh, why it is uh, that uh, you have chosen such a specialized kind of a thing and uh, the people, normal people, might not be much interested to go through such books of remote historical importance? You see, uh, nowadays it's the time of specialization. Yeah, of course it so, is. We thought rather than being a jack of all trades, we should be master of one. <laughs> and we took it for army. Uh, army itself has a number of fields. It's not only the history. It has uh, man management. It has materials management. It has um, uh, money management. You have everything in army. You can pick up any subject, you can pick up, um, uh, you, you get very good authors from army, I must say. Mm -hmm. Those who are very well, well versed with their subject and bring, write good books. Not only on, in fact, on army, we have done, uh, army history, we have done books by army authors, army officers on different subjects like spare parts management. No, no, one thing, here I would like to ask you. I mean, this is a very interesting kind of a subject and you have published one book as far as I know it on this uh, total quality management. Yes. What exactly is this? You see, total quality management, in fact, it is said that it is a concept from Japan. Mm -hmm. But to my knowledge, we have been uh, having total quality from the time of uh, Vedas. Mm -hmm. In Vedas also, we say that it is the yoga mm -hmm. which clears your body. If your body is of super superb quality, you lead good life, quality life. Mm -hmm. And if you have quality, uh, you have a body with good quality, your brain, your other parts would function in the same way. I mean, whatever uh, the way the uh, exercises such as uh, and the yogic exercises go on. Yes. They say it is this exercise is particularly for this, this exercise is particularly for this. And the whole yogic system is for the complete fulfillment of the body as well. Yes. In this, um, uh, in, in fact, the yoga says that total bo uh, body mm -hmm. should be healthy yes. qualitatively. Mm -hmm. And th that is the basic principle of total quality management in industries. What exactly, what exactly is done uh, through this concept? You see, uh, in total quality management, they say that our every aspect of production, whether production, the marketing, the management, or our suppliers, they should be of quality. Their level of maintenance, their level of production, their everything should be of a, such a standard that we have, the loss should be zero. Mm -hmm. Since all the quality, qualitative aspects are maintained, you get a qualitative product. Would you mind giving me an example where it is easily understood, uh, this concept is I'll easily you. understandable? I'll tell you. Now, suppose we are moving in an industry. Mm -hmm. We are in a uh, firm, in fact, in a um, heavy industry. Mm -hmm. And there is a Safai Wala. The basic need of that Safai Wala is to clean. If the plant floor is clean, neat and clean, 
then the workers there would like to take off their shoes mm -hmm. which may bring dirt inside if they take off the shoes they'll the dirt will not be there since the floor is clean they'll like to walk around without any shoes mm -hmm. now since the dirt is not there the total atmosphere of production unit is again mm -hmm. clean yeah. now that again helps in your production the mm -hmm. conditioned again the product brought out is very good since the product brought out is very good the marketing people have something to say that our product is pr um, uh, produced under such uh, stringent conditions mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it's a, a chain a unity of purpose yes it's total a chain. purpose it's a chain mm -hmm. so that's what it is it's in, in fact total quality is the quality of all the people involved in society in life in industry you are writing books on army and do you market it to the army people only or it is uh, marketed uh, for others where the people easily purchase it uh, you see we have our own setup of distribution we have our own mailing lists mm -hmm. it's for the army also it's for our mailing lists also mm -hmm. and um, we bring out books which are required by a very very specific class we cater to the, that class but some books are for general use like this this one yeah. zojila mm -hmm. everybody can read it some books are for this specialized like spare parts management and total quality some are on indian army history that again is a very specialized subject mm -hmm. then there are books on uh, highly specialized which i think nowadays is being carried out the ied disarming Mm -hmm. there's a book yeah, by yeah. arc um, publications on improvised mm -hmm. explosive device disarming mm -hmm. so it's it's a different altogether different uh, aspects we are subjects we are doing but categorically more or less on military and paramilitary what about the you see uh, the the complaint normally comes from the writer that the publisher is not paying uh, according to the agreement which is uh, which has been reached at and uh, it has become now a common place uh, talk that uh, the publisher is taking more advantage than uh, he should have really and the author is being deprived of those advantages uh, it is in hindi world as far as i understand in hindi world it is a well known fact also for example if you are going to print 1000 uh, books you print 1000 books but when you want to reprint the same book you are not consulting the author and you are printing it and uh, in that case has it ever happened in your uh, organization your publication that uh, any complaint has come of that kind till today i have not received any complaint from my authors i have been very lucky mm -hmm. in that context moreover uh, in english we have the subjects which are always updated mm -hmm. in hindi i think you are talking about uh, dramas or prose fiction fiction Poetry. now fiction is a very static subject there is no new development in a fiction how would you say it the story remains the same mm -hmm. in history the history keeps on adding every oh. 10 years every 20 years or in industry there are always mm -hmm. developments in industry mm -hmm. so in uh, drama in prose categorically in hindi mm -hmm. being the static thing mm -hmm. there is no need of asking the author that's what the usual publishers do that But means you see that is uh, you are putting a line of demarcation between uh, uh, reprinting and uh, the next edition yes i mean so far as uh, fiction is concerned or poetry is concerned or uh, subject uh, uh, leading to these uh, dimensions they remain static yes and uh, only reprinting is concerned Uh, not uh, re-editing is uh, that's right. uh, needed. That's right. But in your books, uh, editing is required. Editing is required. After certainly. five years or after ten years yes. or whatever uh, period you. Fix. The scenario changes. Yes. The scenario always changes. In fact, the scenario of the industry changes. The country mm -hmm. political situations of a country change. The economic mm -hmm. policies change. Now, in all these circumstances, we have to upgrade our books. We have to update them. 
whether if they are histor historical books, then they have their history has to be updated. If they are economics, they are related to the industry, then the industry scene has to be taken care. If they are uh, related to security, then that aspect is also to be taken care because the scene, the, because the total yeah. area is fast developing. Mm -hmm. Now, for that we have to go back to our author who is specialized and the moment we go back to him, we have to pay his dues and I think I, we should because that is his baby and uh, what we pay him is peanuts. But here the other way around you see, an event occurred only say a year ago, the Kargil event occurred and this has taken you back into the history 52 years backward, isn't it? Yes. Sometimes this also occurs yes. and you print on those lines also. Yes. Uh, after I have seen a number of Hindi pictures I must say here, <laughs> which gives, gave me this idea that you can use the flashback very good, very well. <laughs> so, I thought taking the present scene from Kargil, we should give a flashback of what happened in the same region 50 years back. Nothing has much changed the state of uh, warfare was the same, the morale of our people was the same, mm -hmm. the victory was same yes. no and uh, the only difference was that this time the media helped Indian Army which was not there at that time and uh, we tried to overcome that aspect by bringing out this book. That I mean, means I, I tried the relevance of it. I, I, I tried. I, if this I could, this is a kind of a research work. Yes. And uh, thinking on those lines that such and such uh, event or such and such portion of the history is so relevant that this must uh, come out to the public. Uh, history is always relevant. You see, uh, we learn from our mistakes. History mm -hmm. teaches us mm -hmm. that these were the mistakes made by certain people, and one should not try to make them again and again. Mm -hmm. So, it is always good to know about our history. Well, Praveen, very much uh, having a talk with you, but not to the extent that we could have really extended the conversation because of the time limits. Well, thank you so very much for having come to this place. Thank and you very much. I right must thank you very much.